More than 140 scientists funded by Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg are urging the social media giant to curb misinformation and incitements to violence from President Trump. The letter, published over the weekend, said, quote, we were disconcerted to see that Facebook has not followed their own policies in regards to President Trump, who has used the Facebook platform to spread both misinformation and incendiary statements. For example, his statement, quote, when the looting starts, the shooting starts, is a clear statement of inciting violence. President Trump wrote that statement on his social media accounts, including Facebook and Twitter, in response to the protests over the death of George Floyd. Twitter put a warning label over the tweet, flagging it as violent content, which broke the company's policies. However, the post was being left up because it was still newsworthy. Facebook, on the other hand, did not take any action for the similar post on its site. But these scientists who receive funding from the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative are not alone in criticizing him. Just last week, thousands of Facebook employees voted in a poll asking the company's CEO to change the company's policy that allows politicians virtually unfettered free speech. For more on this, let's bring in Dan Patterson. He's a senior producer for CNET. Hi, Dan. Great to see you. So Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg held a last minute town hall last week to address this mounting outrage among his employees. Tell us how is the company's tell us what is the company's work culture like and how are the recent controversies impacting it? Yeah, good to see you too, Tanya. So um, the vast majority of Facebook employees, as well as their contractors, sign NDAs when they start. This is not uncommon. Many technology companies do this. Facebook allows employees to vent frustrations, to collaborate, and generally socialize through a number of different message boards on the site. Okay. That's also pretty standard. What's not standard are the flames that have erupted in the last week or 10 days uh, on these message boards. In fact, according to the Washington Post, at a town hall last week, uh, employees accused Mr. Zuckerberg of being, uh, quote, caught in an abusive relationship with President Trump. Many said that Trump was testing Zuckerberg and Facebook's policies and their boundaries ahead of the 2020 election. In fact, um, one employee compared it to the way a toddler or her toddler toddler test boundaries with a parent. So this is a, a pretty serious firestorm that appears to be happening inside Facebook. I, I also reached out to the company uh, ahead of this segment, and they had no comment. Interesting, Dan. I wonder if employees are particularly suspicious of their CEO, of their leader, Mark Zuckerberg, for a number of reasons. I want to point out, as you'll remember, last year, Mr. Trump hosted Mark Zuckerberg for an undisclosed dinner at the White House, which is already a little suspicious on the face of it. Why an undisclosed dinner? Um, so there'd been a lot of speculation over his relationship with the president and even whether Zuckerberg is an embed. You know, is is this a theory that the employees are, you know, becoming more convinced of? So it is not uncommon, as we all know, for business leaders to interact with uh, the president. What is interesting is this, uh, like you uh, said a moment ago there, Tanya, uh, this uh, unreported meeting and a series of meetings that Mr. Zuckerberg appears to have had with the president. Look, uh, what's really important to uh, remember here is that Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act treats tech platforms like Facebook as uh, kind of like neutral pipes, right? So they are not held liable for the content that users post on the site. And we also know that Mr. Trump has used that as a cudgel and as leverage. So it's not clear that uh, the president can do what he's threatened to do, which is to repeal Section 230 and then uh, potentially hold tech companies liable. Uh, but it definitely appears as though he's using this as leverage to kind of get what he wants, which goes back to what we just said a, a moment ago, that he does appear, the president does appear to be testing boundaries at the company to see mm -hmm. what he can get away with. And then on Monday, Dan, as you know, a group of current and former content moderators at Facebook. So there are guys who are supposedly checking the content, right, and making sure that it does adhere to some standards. They also spoke out in solidarity with the company's employees. So why does it matter that at that level they're talking about the issue as well? 
Well, you know, we have been talking a lot about the executives at Facebook. Let's go the other direction. Often, these contractors, these content moderators, aren't actually employees. They're contracted out through organizations. Cognizant is one. And often they are low paid or they're not paid anywhere near what executives are paid. And they are also in charge of enforcing policies. And according to reporting at CNET, The Verge and other outlets, they are exposed to incredibly harmful content for long periods of time. So these are people who see the broad swath of content from the good stuff all the way to the worst stuff that happens on Facebook. And they have to enforce Force these policies. So it's really important that these people speak out because they are some of the least empowered people at Facebook who have to deal with the worst content on Facebook. And mm. well, they have to enforce policies. So their voice really matters here. Very interesting, Dan. So where do you see this all going? Is this the, the type of thing where it's going to be a little firestorm for a while and the employees are venting their frustration and then it all just goes away? Or is there any signaling coming from the highest levels there at Facebook that they're listening and that they're hearing and there may be some changes ahead? Well, my sources at Facebook certainly hear the questions, uh, but we get almost nothing back. So it's very difficult mm -hmm. to discern uh, what's actually happening inside the company. But it does feel like with the rest of this movement, this doesn't feel like a small firestorm that will soon blow away. This feels like a significant movement happening inside the company. And I would suspect, Tanya, that 2020, the election, will be the real test. Unfortunately, the stakes are so high with that that we might learn the results of that test uh, after the fact, and they could be uh, pretty bad results. All right. Well, Dan Patterson, thank you so much. Great to see you.